Hello, this is a video on the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. There's lots of videos out on the internet on the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. I encourage you to look at those and here's um, a few connections that I'd like to add. The Fibonacci numbers are 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and so on. In order to get a particular Fibonacci number you add the two previous so if we are up to 8 we would add 5 and 8 to get 13 then we would add 8 and 13 to get 21 the next no number that is not shown here would be the sum of 21 and 34 which would be 55 so here's a recursive formula for the nth Fibonacci number so F1 is 1, F2 is 1, F3 is 2, and so on. In order to get Fn, you take the previous Fibonacci number, which would be Fn minus 1, plus the one before that, which would be Fn minus 2. For example, F7 will equal F6 plus F5. This is just a precise mathematical way to write down what we were doing with the numbers themselves. This is called a recursive formula, meaning to build up the next number, we use the previous numbers in the list. I'd like to point out that this can also be written this way. Well, this is equivalent to what I have. But here's a second way. Fn plus 1 is equal to Fn plus Fn minus 1. And Fn plus 2 is equal to Fn plus 1 plus Fn. I hope you can see that these are equivalent. Now I'd like to look at a closed form formula for the nth Fibonacci number. This is not recursive, so now we would want to jump to maybe the 18th Fibonacci number without figuring out the first 17. Uh, the proof of this formula can be found on the internet. Now let's see how we might use this on a graphing calculator. Here I am using a TI Inspire, the actual teacher software, and I plugged in and I used n equals 4, which means I'm finding the fourth Fibonacci number. And if we look at our list, we can see that F4 is in fact equal to 3. Now, I think I can copy. Let me see here if I can come up here and copy. And then get in here and let's say that we want to find the, the tenth Fibonacci number. I'm going to change n to 10. Notice in the formula n appears three times, and so the tenth Fibonacci number is 55. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, the tenth one would be 55. So a scientific or graphing calculator works pretty well with the closed form. It turns out that both recursive formulas and closed form formulas are important in the Common Core State Standards for Math. So let's take a look at the Common Core State Standards. I do have a web page on the Common Core State Standards. And I do have a link to the Common Core State Standards themselves. It is a PDF document. If we search the document for the word recursive we find it here and this is the high school mathematics function standard a function can be described in various ways it can be described as a graph a verbal rule an algebraic expression which would be the closed form for example f of x equals a plus bx or by a recursive rule Here's another instance of the word recursive when I did my search. 
In fact, if we look at FIF, which is functions interpreting functions three, it says here that students should be able to recognize that sequences such as functions sometimes defined recursively. For example, the Fibonacci sequence f of 0 equals f of 1 equals 1, and f of n plus 1 is equal to f of n plus f of n minus 1. So now I'd like to point out uh, the connection or a connection between the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. If we take the ratio, which would be the quotient of consecutive Fibonacci numbers, the larger the numbers are, the closer the ratio is to the golden ratio. For example, if you take 34 divided by 21, we get 1.619. However, if the numbers are larger, we take 89 divided by 55, we get 1.61818. The actual golden ratio is here, and we have not calculated the golden ratio, so you'll have to take my word for that. This particular slide is a screenshot from a great video by Art Benjamin titled The Magic of Fibonacci Numbers. It is a TED Talk. I encourage you to look that up. So let's take a look and see what the golden ratio is. The golden ratio is a number phi. And in this particular rectangle, phi is the longer side of the rectangle when the shorter side of the rectangle is 1. So this is 1. And in fact, this is a square here. I'm going to label it right away. All these sides are 1. And this side here at the top is phi. This is the Greek letter phi, sometimes called phi. So if this entire distance is phi and this distance is 1, this shorter distance here in this smaller rectangle would be phi minus 1. This is a lovely rectangle because if we take the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side, in other words, phi over 1, and then we remove a square, the remaining square is going to be similar to the, I'm sorry, the remaining rectangle is going to be similar to the original rectangle. So the ratio of the long side to the short side will be equal. Let's write that as a proportion. Here's our proportion. The ratio of the long side of the original rectangle to the short side is equal to the ratio of the long side to the short side of the smaller rectangle. The smaller rectangle is similar to the larger rectangle. If we would continue this process of taking the golden rectangle, removing a square, and getting a similar rectangle, then removing a square and getting a similar rectangle, remove a square, get a similar rectangle, remove a square, get a similar rectangle, and so on. We get this lovely figure. And there is a spiral formed here, which occurs in nature. And I'll let you look that up more on the internet. Now let's see what happens when we solve this proportion for, for phi. The first thing we would do is cross multiply, and that would give us phi times phi minus 1 would equal 1, or phi squared minus phi equals 1. This is quadratic, so we would need to get it equal to 0. If we apply the quadratic formula, we get these two solutions. And there is uh, some work involved there, which I haven't shown here on this slide. This has two solutions, of course, because it is quadratic. The positive solution is going to be 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. And this is the value of phi, which is 1.61808333. One thing to just point out is if we subtract 1, we get the 0.618. So 
numerically this proportion can be written as 1.618 over 1 is equal to 1 over 0.618. It is certainly a very special number. A slightly more general way of thinking about the golden ratio or the golden rectangle is to label the square as a by a and the other segment here b the shorter segment and so we can just think of these segments on the top we have a small segment which is b we have a larger segment which is a and the sum of the segments so if we just look at this top edge the ratio of the sum of the segments to the larger segment is equal to the ratio of the larger segment to the smaller segment and this ratio a over b is equal to our 1.618 and so on the Fibonacci numbers in the golden ratio appear in nature and architecture extensively and I'll let you look those up on the internet it is kind of fun to do a um, search on Etsy for golden ratio and see some of the products so here are some of the popular items for the golden ratio they have jewelry of course um, I, I like this one over here this again shows the ratio of, of 1 to 0.6 one eight is the same as the ratio of 1.618 the sum to one and uh, the, these would be a nice device to have of course you can get the golden ratio temporary tattoo if you don't want to get the golden ratio as a permanent tattoo you can get the Fibonacci sequence curio shelf Maybe I'll show one more. They have this art print that shows the golden ratio to many decimal places. And then this nice quote by Galileo. Mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe. And to end this video, I'd like to end with the icosahedron. The icosahedron is a lovely three-dimensional solid it's made up of 20 triangles and lo and behold it has three golden ratios uh, I'm sorry three golden rectangles on the inside each of these planes here uh, you can make this out of cardstock is a golden rectangle and the 12 vertices of the rectangles are in fact the 12 vertices of the icosahedron simply beautiful. My name is Jim Olson. Have a great day.